I was in this record label meeting, and this, and this this little kid, man, he, he worked at the label. He about twenty. He's like, man, you want to hear this artist be from the sound? I was like, yeah. He played it. It sounded like it was just like junk being clumped together. <laughs> and I was just like, what the? F I don't Why? understand. Do what, what are we doing? I, I mean, <laughs> and so I, I, he was like, oh, you don't think he can rap, do you? I was like, no. Nah. He's like, that ain't the point. It don't matter. What? I was like, I was like, yeah, I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> I shouldn't be here, my That's so opposite, man. Fit. Like, I don't understand that He's like, that yo, that ain't the point. He's like, he's like, man, this this, this song, it just makes me feel, make us feel good. I was in this record label meeting. And I was like, all right. Interesting. So, but, it, but what that does is, and then me and Donnie was talking, it let me know that it's Generation X's fault. We did a horrible job of raising our children. Like, we did a horrible job of giving them information. We didn't give them no information. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So they I like, agree with that a thousand percent. Why do I got to put information in raps? I got none. I like, agree with that a thousand percent. <laughs> what did you say? But what's interesting, though, is when you get to the J. Coles, the Kendrick Lamars, and you would think that if, if that is successful, why not just replicate it? Everybody replicate every... So if I'm replicating Fetty Wap, or if I'm replicating all this other shit, why not replicate that? It, it's hard. Know, it is harder. I was in this record label meeting, but you know who's severely most underrated new rapper? And I don't even listen to this kind of music. Is Louie. King Louie? He's so like underrated. That. But it be to me it'd be a sign when I look at all of the younger Chicago artists, for me it's a sign that they got bad management and bad people around them. For them to be so in demand on one mm -hmm. hand, but on and another then. hand not able to really monetize it mm -hmm. and not able to mainstream it, like it's a sign of like bad people around you. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 super bad decisions. I was in this record label meeting. It's the spirit of the music, like you dragging that spirit around with you. And at some point, people gotta realize it ain't just music. It's this is um. It's karma. It's, well, it's like Africans banging the drum to tell you, all right, we running east, we doing this, we doing that. Well, the, you, they don't realize the power of the drum they banging. They well, don't realize what they. You they, know. they summoning spirits, you know what I'm saying? So you've been working, man. I mean, mm -hmm. recently, a lot of success recently because yeah, yeah, yeah. we know you wrote Jesus Walks, co-wrote mm -hmm. Jesus Walks, and now you got a Grammy for that. Now you got another one. For uh, uh, We got the Oscar for Glory. Oscar, I'm sorry. Yeah, for yeah, glory. it was, wasn't a Grammy, it was an right, Oscar. Right, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Some more distinguished. A little soft. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, did the, we got the Oscar for Glory. And then based on that, you know, I did this documentary that's uh, in theaters now called In My Father's House, where basically I never knew my father. And so what I did, kind of like an I won move, was I bought the house that he grew up in. But when I got in that house, I didn't feel right. And so... I, I went on a journey to find his father I didn't know and, and really just tell him what I thought of him. But when I found my father, he had been homeless for 30 years. And so it wasn't that he abandoned me, he fell in a hole. So this film is about rescuing my father from homelessness. I haven't spoken to my father since I was 12 years old. I wonder if he knows that I'm right back. He's from Chicago. He won a Grammy for co-writing Jesus Walks, the Kanye West song. When I found my father, he was homeless on the west side of Chicago. This is for me, man. Son, this is Ryan Beck. We are going through some hard times. Homeless and jobless, too. I learned a lot about myself. And you know, we're from Chicago, so we could talk like family, even when we look at, at my peers. So when I look at Kanye, he knew his mom and dad. His mom is a Fulbright scholar. His dad was a Baptist minister and a Black Panther. I mean, when Kanye went through things, he had his mom and dad to pick him up. This what you got to do, son. This what you got to So it's a confidence to go with it. Right. When you look at Common, his father, a basketball player. His mother was a, a principal of a high school. Mm -hmm. Lupe, father, was a martial arts champion his mother was a community activist it's a confidence to go with that right. when you me my mother was 15 years old when I was born my father wasn't around so you know I'm more comfortable 
hey man, I'll write the song with you. You go out there and do it. Hey man, you know, let me just go ahead. But but now that I got my that 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 origin back to myself, I'm like, mm -hmm. what am I doing writing Oscar Award winning songs for other people? That's Yo, real. I need to be doing it because my humor comes from here. My right. sensitivity comes from here. My toughness comes from my mama. My work ethic comes from my mama. So now that I know who I am, it, it makes all the sense in the world, and I'm not afraid to put that on the line. So now you're definitely more confident as an artist and in everything. At, man, that, that at do. 35 years old. And that, and that made me realize it's a lot of grown people out here mm -hmm. that need parents. You know what I'm saying? Like grown people that's incomplete and be having unhealthy behavior because we don't have, our, we don't know our roots. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of women get with men that be grown and insecure. And looking for that. And looking for that and then take it out on the woman. Absolutely. And then try to take her fire away. Absolutely. Or a lot of women get with men, but really she trying to find a daddy from that man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It can't, it can't do that. And so, you know, this film is about completeness. And, and I encourage everybody, go to inmyfathershousefilm.com and then you can learn more about how you can see the movie. I, I found it very interesting watching you go through, like, different cycles, you know, when you found your dad. It was like you went through a moment where you was like, oh, snap, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you was excited. And then you went through a moment and you realized you had to do something to help him. Right, and then you went through another moment where it was like you was a dad. Yeah, like, it was. Look, that, man. that's where we at now. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm the father. I mean, because you got to realize my father homeless for thirty years. Right. Man, who got to pay all the expenses and the bills? Me. So that's another dependent, and so, I don't even get a tax credit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a boyfriend, taught me how to womanize, how to run from the truth and tell women lies. Never had a father, and I blame my mama. She made bad judgments and had horrible karma. Couldn't even find a decent man for me to honor. I gave my life to the streets, that was my alma mater. So now you got the visual. Yeah. And the moment where you're dealing with and building with your dad and helping him, and then you have the music for it too. Yeah. Is there gonna, let's talk about the music around the movie. Man, I look, I look now like for my, my music, and I was telling Twan Gabs this uh, not too long ago, our music right now, at the age we at, has to be our ministry. Mm -hmm. It got to be what we about as human beings and leading other people through our journey and through their journey. Music got to be a soundtrack to people's lives. Man, when I got my first car, man, I was listening to Brand New. When I kid, when I made love the first time, I was listening to The Syndicate. When I was, you know, it's got to be, our music has to be a series of first experiences for people, mm -hmm. the themes of their life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when, when music meets movements, it creates change. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So new music that you yeah, will working, be working on now. Uh, I'm working on I finished I already finished two albums. I'm working on a third one. But the album that uh I'm about to put out in the new year is called Push the World. Mm -hmm. I got songs with Bon Jovi, who's actually the group is coming here this weekend. I'm gonna hang out with them. I got a song called Push the World with Bon Jovi. Wow. I got a, a song called Mastermind with Common and Jesse Jackson, which is crazy. I would love to play that song too. I got a song with a with, with Mastermind with Common and, and Jesse Jackson. But mostly, you know, the album is me and my producer S1. And so S1 produced Power for Kanye, Best Thing I Ever Had for Beyonce. Mm -hmm. He produced half of Lupe's latest album. Um, and I'm just, it's my ministry. I got a, I got an album in the works with Terry Hunter called Things Women Need to Hear. Ah! Yeah, it's going to be crazy. You know, with songs, songs like, one. I don't like your kids. <laughs> 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 you know, it's got to be the ministry. That's you know, funny. Man. But that could go both ways. Y'all need to let me tell a woman side on that. Okay. Well, you that could go you, both you ways. Hop on it you know what I'm saying? So, look, <laughs> me and Terry starting on this album November 1st. You got to come. I'm standing at this crib for like 30 days. You got to come through and yeah, just drop I will. Something. I will represent for the yeah. Because that can go both ways. Yeah, things men need to hear. <laughs> so we're going we gonna to do the single, uh, Things Women Need to Hear. You should come jump on it. It's going to be uh, me and Anthony Hamilton. I will. Yeah, you got to jump on it. Thank that. you for the invite. I need you on that. I definitely will. That is way too funny, man. Yeah, so it's the ministry. But that, that right there, so you take the movie, you take the music that we're doing, and, and what we're doing at Donda's house, that made me be able to run into a guy like Kenneth Cole. Like, I didn't even know who this dude was. We, we're at 
I'm at a party rocking in New York doing this show in New York. This white guy steps to me. He's like, hey, man, I, I, I really loved your movie. And, man, I need your email address. And I'm like, man, I'm really not. I don't go that way, you know. Ah, like, no, 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 no. I like what you're doing. I want to talk to you about it. So, you know, a few weeks later, yo, it's Ken Cole. And he like, yo, I want to I wanna make you a model. He hits me up. I want to make you a model on one of my campaigns. I'm like, look, man, I ain't no model, you know. He said, no, the real models are the role models. He was like, I like you because of who you are and what, what you, you do. Represent. What you represent. I love that. Now he got me all over New York on buildings, billboards, bus stops, New York, D.C., L.A., all over his stores, everywhere. Like, I just came back from New York, and I'm walking past a tour bus, and I just see my face huge. And everybody like, that's him. And it was, <laughs> and it's like, yo, it lets me know. Like, a lot of times in hip-hop, we live in dog years. Mm. So it's kind of like, oh, you three years old, you old. Right. You, 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 you 28, you old. You 35, you old. But I think as hip-hop ages, Bum B is a grandfather. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z is hitting 50. You know what I'm saying? Don't let the industry and the system trick you out of being you. I was in this record label meeting. 